The first part of the agenda is what you're looking at, that being me, uh, for introductory remarks and some announcements, and uh, then we are going to have one of our archivists standing right here to my right, Mel Kennett, will give us a history of the Doylestown High School, and that will be followed by, I hope, Jane Halderman. Is Jane Halderman here? Uh oh, what am I going to do? <laughs> is that you, Jane? I have not met Jane, and I'll explain, I'll explain a little bit more about Jane when we get to you in our agenda, which will be following Milt. So we're making this one up on the fly. <laughs> and then we will have uh, what we call a roundtable discussion, even though it will be happening around this very rectangular real table. And we have eight graduates of the school, and I won't introduce them now. They can introduce themselves when we get to that portion of the program. And once we're finished with that, of course, the, the roundtable discussion will be reminiscences from these people. We encourage the audience uh, to chime in, as I'm sure you will, and then we'll open things up to the crowd. And then we will close the program with door prizes. Everybody here has picked a ticket. If you haven't gotten a ticket, you can see that pretty lady right there who has tickets for you. And we will, we will then uh, do our door prizes, and we have some items for sale, and like that. So it's a, it's a pretty full program. Uh, we are likely to get interrupted by people banging on the door, and we'll, we'll just deal with that. So uh, I would ask that you kind of keep the uh, talking to yourselves at somewhat of a minute a minimum so that we can proceed. But the first thing I want to do... Um, is introduced to you our guest of honor who just recently arrived. And her name is Ella Kratz Noble. Did I say that right? I did. Ella is sitting over here. And that's her, her daughter, Mary Ellen. And the reason why she, Ella is our guest of honor is she is a graduate of Doylestown High School, but not just a graduate. She just happens to be the oldest living graduate of Doylestown High School at current age 105. Oh. Ella, your graduation year was 1926. So the story that you will read in tomorrow's Intel, and by the way, the Intel is here, uh, Intel reporter, par excellence, Peggy Kwan. Peggy, where, where are you? Did she go to the other guys? <laughs> Peggy is here to cover the story, and I'm, I'm sure that you will see Ella's picture or something like that in, in the paper as well. So, so, so you're here for that. Thank you once again. I, I can't thank you, thank you enough, Ella, for, for coming. Okay, so let me make uh, let me make some announcements. Uh, I actually I, one other announcement. I just saw walk in. His Honor, the Mayor of Doylestown, Ron, Ron Strauss, has joined us. Does the Mayor want to say anything? I, I just want to say congratulations for a turnout of about oh. 94 people. Yeah, something like that. It's terrific. Thank you very much. Keeping those comments brief, I'd like that. <laughs> I, I was very pleased to receive this as I arrived. My, my mother graduated from Doylestown High School in 1932. And uh, I'm sorry she's not able to be here tonight, but thank you very much. Is that your uncle, too? That That's also my uncle. She, she was required to stay behind a year so that she could go to school with her brother. <laughs> so with that, I think I am about finished here, and I would like now to turn the lectern over to Milt Kennan, I mentioned is uh, one of our, arch our, uh, our archivists. There are very few people who know more about Doylestown, other than maybe Mr. Levinson over there, than, than uh, Milt Kennan. Um, I, okay, I'm, yeah. yeah, Gene Rutherford. Gene Rutherford. <laughs> <laughs> Milt is, uh, is, the people who know him will 
grotesque is uh, a legend in his own time. Oh, please. <laughs> and uh, before I get into any trouble here, Milt Kennan. Since I have to use this. Yeah, but just leave it. Uh, I'll be back. Well, how are all you students tonight? Hello there. Uh, we're actually your. You're not late for class, you're just being kept after class. <laughs> As uh, Stuart also alluded to, the uh, forerunner of the high school was the, uh, the Union Academy, which is a little better picture. And that served the community from 1804 to 1889, which is approximately uh, 85 years. Uh, by that time, long before, actually before that time, say by the 18 um, minutes, um, late 1870s, uh, uh, the population of Doylestown was expanding in such a rate that they said they, they just needed a new school because this room was inadequate for the services. So uh, the borough uh, purchased this building and took it down in 1889 and proceeded to put up the, 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 the one that you all went to. And, and so in, uh, in, 18, in 1889, they got an architect by the name of Milton Bean of Lansdale, which in the audience this, a, this evening is a, a leading authority on, on uh, Milton Bean, who's in the back there, Mr. Montoya, who uh, knows more about Milton Bean than anybody living today. And also the local contractors who put this up, uh, maybe names that are familiar also to you, is Henry Livesey and James Flack. There might be that name might mean something to you. And uh, the cost of this building is $30,000. <laughs> and uh, the students started to come into that school in March of 1890, March 21st, 1890. And they had grades one to eight, and uh, the lower grades were on the lower floors, and the high school uh, classes were on the upper floor. And the entrance, of course, as you most know, nearest the Court Street was strictly for the girls on, on the one side, on the Court Street side, and on the other side was the boys. And then there was a, a partition to keep them separate. At least uh, getting into the school, anyway. Uh, the first principal was Eugene Smith, who got the salary of $35 a month. And he also had to teach classes. And there was also, they had two female instructors who taught, taught the lower grades. And they had a salary of an odd figure of per month, $19.83. I don't know what they did with all the extra money. Uh, the first baccalaureate in 1892, in June, June 1892, was the first baccalaureate was held at the Doylestown Presbyterian Church. And the graduation ceremony was held at the Lenape Hall. And for many years, Lenape Hall was used for that purpose, among other purposes. On the second floor was an auditorium of Lenape Hall. Now it's, I think it's all apartments today. Uh, and the first class would graduate at seven. And in 19, by 1912, again, just like uh, tearing down um, the, um, the academy, they were running out of room. So uh, they had to expand, and the building that you knew was the annex, was built in 1912, and opened at a cost of $50,000. Um, a. Oscar Martin was the architect for the annex, and it contained an auditorium and the, and the classrooms. And it was uh, at that time, about that time, the school had a three-year term, and by 1913, it went to the four-year term, which all you, you went. Um, and um, then in 1926 and 1927, they built two other annexes, which faced the Garden, garden, uh, garden Alley uh, section of, of uh, the school. And I think uh, Lois McClintock 
uh, toy there? You did, Lois? Substituted. You substituted. Um, and of course, uh, they had seven principles in the time from 1890 to 1951. And of course, uh, I suppose, uh, when we had Margaret Mead, who was the first publisher and founded, actually started what they called The Torch. And that was the Christmas issue of 1916. And then that went through the entire, all the years up till 1951, and then off to the next school, and then that became the Antler. And uh, then you had, uh, you had three, I would say, my, I would think, three prominent principals. Carmen Ross, Arthur Reese, and J. Leonard Halderman. Now, in the audience today, we have the niece of Carmen Ross, who is Ella Kratz, the oldest graduate. And she is the niece of Carmen Ross. She has something to say. Can you use the mic here? Yes. Yes. No, no, this is a, a picture of the dedication day at the school back in 1890. So the school, do you, uh, did it have, had the weather vane and all in your time? Yes. Mm -hmm. right. Also had a bell. Had what? The bell. Had the bell, yeah, which is now out of the War Memorial Field in the in the building down there. there. Um, our, uh, here's a picture that was taken in 1899 without the uh, the annex. <laughs> um, this is the first class of. How many Harlequins do we have in the audience today? Here's the first class of the Harlequins, 1926. That's Ella's year. This is the first group of Harlequins. You were a Harlequin. Uh -huh. Was that the play called The Bell of Barcelona? <laughs> but you were in the you were in the play. You were in the plays in those years, yeah. Ella was also the poet of the school. She could recite poets. We saw her last year and she recited a poem, almost a paragraph, from memory that she composed when she was in school all those years ago. Just just like that. I mean, I can't remember the newspaper I read yesterday. And she, 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 she read this poem, a paragraph. Imagine. Yeah. Now, here, here's, a, here's a picture I, I was quite taken with. It's what we would call home economics today. And I don't know how many years the, 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 this group was called the Dinner Bells. <laughs> and these are um, the home economics. So the first, the first row had the roller pins, the second row has the frying pans, and the third row has uh, spoons. <laughs> it's called the Dinner Bell. I thought, that, I thought that's fun. So do we have any Dinner Bells in the audience? This happened, well, this was 1934. I know there's no 1934, but I don't know how many years the dinner bells were in the home economics. And so, um, um, and the last class was 1951, and uh, the baccalaureate uh, uh, was uh, at uh, Salem, United, Salem Reform Church at the time, and the graduation was at the War Memorial Field, and uh, 119 graduated that year. So that's a brief history. Thank you. Okay, so so moving right along, Milt mentioned that one of the principals who was at Boylestown High School for a long period of time was a fellow named Holderman. J L. J L Holderman. 
All right. <laughs> <laughs> we would really have liked to have got Mr. Haldeman here to be a speaker. I know you would all have enjoyed that, but unfortunately, he is predisposed. Yes. <laughs> but in his place, we have his daughter, Jane. Aww. And she has very graciously agreed to address you and say a couple words and reminisce a little bit about her father and the school. Jane, can you work your way up here? Do I have to come up there? Uh, you know what? If you would prefer, let me get you. I'll give you I'm all right okay. here. I got a big voice. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Upstairs, we have a, no, they won't hear you upstairs and in the house. So let me give you this. I'll pass it back to you. <laughs> This is Jane Halderman Strong talking. We came to Doylestown in 1937. Um, my dad as the principal of the Doylestown High School. I was in the fifth grade. My brother was in the eighth grade. And we finished school there and did quite well. <laughs> of course, when you're the principal's daughter, you know, nobody bothers you. <laughs> So anyway, Dad was a wonderful man, and I hope you feel he did a good job in Doylestown. Thank you for this evening. Okay, thank you very much, Jane. So. We have now reached our round table, rectangular table discussion, and so uh, I'm going to try to moderate this and we'll keep it uh, keep it orderly if we can. So why don't we do this? Let's just kind of uh, go around uh, the table and you can introduce yourself, say your name and the class you graduated, and whatever you have to say and then kind of pass the mic. Okay, Nick, you want to be first? Okay, thank you. I was looking around the room. Looking around the room, and uh, as an outsider, uh, to us town in high school, primarily you were either a townie or you came from the outside. And if you came from the outside, it was usually by bus. And then if you went into the sports program, you usually had a thumb at home because there were no buses at that time. I wasn't too bad off. I lived in New Britain, so that wasn't exceptionally hard. Uh, you got to know who came off of their work time and the same way getting in the morning you'd usually thumb it in rather than try to catch a bus. There were only two buses, one on the east side of 611 and the other on the other side of it. Uh, a Childs, my name is Childs, was the one driver and Henstron was the other. Uh, if you missed the bus, then you uh, thumbed it home, and actually thumbing at that time wasn't too bad from the standpoint. You really knew who was working in town, and they knew you, and if you missed one person, someone else would pick you up. Only difficult thing was to go out for sports. Then it was pretty hard to do. I would say the basketball team was primarily uh, made up of the uh, kids that lived in town. We, we didn't have that much of an option. Uh, it was a, a challenging program. Oh, football, yes. Uh, Bill Wolf was in charge and uh, as far as Jim, you could not uh, to get to the practice field, which is now where the stadium is now, but you had to uh, walk down from, from the school. And usually it was a, a taboo to uh, wear uh, football shoes to go down there. So usually you'd walk through town in your stock and feet until they wore out. <laughs> <laughs> and then if uh, practice was on for a little longer, any of the guys that had cars, they would pull them up to more Memorial Field and turn the lights on. You would finish out. Mm -hmm. Then you'd take the sweaty uniforms back and put them down in the, uh, uh, oh, I guess,
guess it, we call it a drawing room, but actually it was the piping for the high school. <laughs> Very, I mean, it, it could stand up by itself. <laughs> 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 but those were, were times that uh, you can look back on, and uh, it was a, a growing period. Still, uh, still recall a lot of good things. What class? Then? 48. <laughs> Uh, no, the uh, background that I got was was really good uh, from the standpoint of I had no thoughts of going to uh, going on to school until my uh, uncle, that was Paul Healthman, he got involved and he put uh, he took me up to state. He was going to take some summer school stuff, and the first thing I knew, I was signed up to go go to the West. Keystone Junior College as a, an out, outside program that State had. And I came home and told my, my dad what I was going to do, and he really hit the ceiling. And that, that wasn't in his plan. So, uh, and then I followed through with that, and it was good. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Nice to be here tonight. said I should speak first. Uh, Mary J. Myers Clemens. I graduated in 1949. Our freshman class in 1945 numbered 198, the largest class up to that date. We graduated 138 in 1949. Uh, I lived in Chopin Borough. Chopin at that time had its own school board. Uh, I went from grade one through eight there, and I found out that I am sitting here with the sister of my second grade teacher. <laughs> uh, we were bus. the school board paid for us, the Reading Company, to bus us. And those of us that went to Doylestown High School, our class, eighth grade class, was divided. You had your choice of going to either Lansdale or Doylestown. And my particular class was about half and half which made it interesting because the Thanksgiving game in those years was <laughs> and we all met together at the railroad station in the morning so you can imagine what went on around Thanksgiving time. Uh, however, our, the Reading bus would start its first run of the morning from the Chopin railroad station and drop us at the Broad Street entrance there of the, of the uh, school. And I was thinking, Jody, was that known as the senior steps? I sort of remember yes, them. Yes, it was. Yes. The senior yes. steps. Yes. Uh, they would pick us up right after school. If you were staying for sports or musical or uh, anything, they would give you a ticket and you would walk down to the train station and take the train home. Um, I have here a report that in uh, September of 1945, Principal Holman reports that 60% of the high school students are not borough residents. At that time, Chopin Borough had 12, Wellstown Township 68, New Britain Borough 26, New Britain Township 22, Plumstead Township 84, and Warrington Township 47. Uh, I just said about busing, I'll have to tell you a story about New Britain Township busing. <laughs> It contracted for a gentleman to use his panel truck to transport the high school students. My cousin happened to be one of these. And he would park this panel truck in the barn at night and sometimes left the windows open. And he had bunches along the back of the bus. And my cousin said sometimes he got in and you found out the chickens had been roosting on his fence. <laughs> I really enjoyed high school. I think, uh, as Dick said, the out-of-towners, it took you about a year to really get into the, the whole thing, I think, but uh, then you really meshed well. We just had our 65th anniversary class uh, reunion, and I had uh, got some things together. When you mentioned about the fire. I have a picture of the burning and all of the uh, newspaper reports about it. Uh, I have a book here that's all the sports from between 45 and 49, so if you were in any of those years, you might like to look at that. And I have all of the musical things, too, from that time. And uh, with music, right after the war, the summer concerts were started, and the Doylestown Band was the first to uh, participate in that. And at that time, they built a temporary stage on the Court Street side, or the Broad Street side of the old courthouse. And Joe Kenny was master of ceremonies for these concerts. 
And after we graduated, the London alumni still came back to them. And those concerts still are held at the new courthouse, and I'm amazed at the older people that are still playing in those concerts and all. And we got paid 25 cents for practice and 25 cents for the concert, uh, toward chaos money. And I had an uh, ad that was in the paper from it was the Doylestown Civic Association that sponsored them. And they had put an ad in the paper for people to contribute money to pay for the uh, participants in these concerts. So, and I had a picture and I had shown it to the, one of the Lions members last year and I misplaced it. If I come across it, I'll have to see that the, the story uh, gets it. Uh, one of the things I wanted to mention was I, uh, I did a book for the 50th anniversary uh, from different articles from the Intel and all. I spent several weeks up at the uh, Versa Museum Library. Unfortunately, I had it on a display at our class reunion and somebody walked away from my own popcorn. Oh, um, but uh, there were some interesting things. Do us some paper used to have columns we noticed. And um, our town, I think, was another one. But anyhow, it was uh, an article, a little blurb in. The Doylestown Hospital is announcing births. Um, and contrary to what Dr. Moore, anybody remember Dr. Yeah. Moore? Oh, yeah. 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 Well, contrary to what he told us, the heading for that was Stork Delivers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but then in the 1940s, the hospital, or the paper did change it to uh, Babies Born or something to that effect, but originally it was Stork Delivers. Um, I had made some notes and I forgot to bring them along because it would be interesting to see what it cost for busing, what it cost for the uh, whole, uh, I think it was a hundred and some thousand, the budget, the one year for the school district, uh, for the, uh, that was the whole borough school uh, budget, and uh, quite a change from now. And you said about the home economics, uh, Dr. Holderman, right after, the, this would have been 45 or 46, stated he was unable to fill a position of home ec teacher. They're just... Nobody was available for it, though. So, uh, and I'm sorry I forgot my notes because I had some other interesting things too. Is there anybody here other than I know Jody was a year and Dick were the year ahead of me? Anybody else from uh, between 45 and 49? I have books up here. One is uh, sports and it has a few articles from the paper too, and the other one was all the music uh, things. And then, as I say, uh, for our class reunion, I edit this little section, the end, and it was the end of, for us, not high school, and also was the end of the building. And I have at the back there a picture of our class reunion taken down at Mount Vernon. Uh, we went with, uh, joined the Hatfield High School class, which only number 40 saw I think at the time. And uh, I have that picture back there if anybody would want to look at it. I'll probably think of some other things as we go along too, but, okay? Can't hear you. I don't want to shout them out of stairs. Yes, it is. It's on. Sorry. Um, I lived just a half a block from the high school for 12 years, and I got to the point where I waited for the first bell to ring, and then I jump out of bed, get dressed, and go to school. Very convenient. And it was a wonderful experience. Um, lots of things happened in a lifetime, and I. We still have many friends that we gather from our class of 1948, and they keep in touch with one another, which is very nice. Anyway, and Earl Handy is back there, and he's an artist. Dave Evans was an artist in our class, and Bob Duncan. And they all pursued that field one way or another, and their work is somewhat known. Um, we enjoyed our sports. We went down to the Berkeley Playground, played the hockey there in junior high school, and then the high school uh, area, we went down.
down there from his senior high school. Anyway, it was a good time, and that's enough for now. Mm -hmm. Can I just mention something else so, I couldn't think about? <laughs> I had mentioned about music. I, I enjoyed music very much. I was band orchestra uh, and dance band. And I can remember Miss Clifton. Anybody had Miss Clifton? Yes. 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 In her work program. Well, I'm accused to go out on it because band and orchestra are all these seven different experience. And, and so I didn't want to give that up. And I can remember her saying to me, well, what good is that going to do later on in life? But I happen to remember, too, back in 45 or 46, the school district, or the high school, decided to move instrumental practice and all over to the Presbyterian Education Building because it was disturbing to the classrooms nearby, so they moved it over there. I remember having the spring concerts over there. Uh, hi, I'm Jean Rutherford, and I was born in Doylestown and went all through the Doylestown school system. Um, graduated in 1941, along with uh, Catherine Smith Pomar and Betty Schuyler Mathers, we were all in the same class, and uh, had a lot of fun. What was uh, your name, Jean? Weisel? Yes. Jean Weisel. I met him back. Oh, you did? Yeah. <laughs> and I brought some pictures, uh, uh, naturally, uh, and there's one here uh, with the uh, first uh, first formal dance band, which was uh, formed in 1937. And oh, I can't spend all that time. Uh, but um, uh, what can I say? <laughs> dance band. Uh, in the top. You can see the freeze with the uh, tiles that, that are mentioned here tonight. Uh, and there are a bunch of pictures of our uh, um, teachers, Hollis Latchett, oh, yeah. Anthony Peschel, and Alan George. Oh, yeah. Alan George. <laughs> 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 There's a picture of Room A with Spurgeon Wurtenberger, who was our science instructor. And uh, uh, the um, opportunity class had a, a demonstration, and uh, that was Amy Bard and um, Frank Yoakum. Everybody remembers Frank Yoakum. Um, so that makes me think that want to come up and look at that. And then um, we were speaking about the uh, Thanksgiving game. Uh, it was always Doylestown and, and Lansdale. And this is a picture of a pep rally. And the cars are going the wrong way on State Street. Uh, but I knew a bunch of these people in this. That, well, that was part, they had a big parade and a rally before the game. And there are pictures of Doylestown as it was in the olden days. So maybe you'd enjoy that. And uh, I brought this article about Carmen Ross. So maybe Ella would be interested in looking at that. Uh, I think Betty has some things to tell you about sports. Um, I just wanted to say, um, James' brother was in our class, Leonard, and Dr. Moore's son, Alan, was in our class also. And talking about the buses, uh, we didn't have buses except there was a bus that came down from Dublin up that way. And it was just little, and I don't think there were maybe ten people in it. And it was an old orange thing, and we all called it the cheese box. <laughs> it like the cheese box. And I lived the last house in Doylestown, and um, it was a mile from my house to the up, up the up the school. And we came home at lunchtime. We walked a mile home, mile back. Still had time to 
played jump rope. Yeah. We got up early in the morning so we could get up there and play jump rope in the morning. So we had plenty of exercise. And we were the first ones to have tennis. Uh, in, there was no tennis program until we came along. And there were no tennis courts. So we had to go to other places. And one of the places that we went to the tennis court was Oscar Hammerstein's bar. Out there, we walked out and laid tennis and came back. And then we also went across the street to Merhalks and the Strattons. We played tennis on their court. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, then the Strattons. At the, at the Berkey Playground is where we uh, had our meets. So we had a wonderful time playing tennis. And of course, we played hockey there, too. And um, oh, the other thing, when they were talking about the senior boys and the senior girls, if I remember, um, the, the restrooms were downstairs, right underneath those steps. And I think they didn't have flush toilets. That was a long thing of water. And the water. So we had a wonderful time and we really enjoyed it. Oh, you're the young one. Well, I graduated with these other two people in 1941. However, I lived in Pineville, so that was like the next country. But because my mother graduated from Doylestown High School, of course, her girls had to go to Doylestown High School no matter what. So I did get a ride with a man who worked in the courthouse, which was great because I was on the rifle team. And there's a picture of us on the rifle team. We practiced down at the armory. So when school was out, we would go down there. And <clears throat> Henny Allman, who I, he must have been a caretaker or something at the armory. But he was the one that really helped us out. And we had a great time. So I could go down, do my practice shots, and then I would come back to the courthouse and still get my ride back to Pineville. So I, I thought I was very fortunate. Didn't, there weren't any buses, and I guess I was the only one from Upper Makefield Township. So then you could go to any high school, but you had to find your own transportation. And then I brought something that I had given to the Historical Society, and I'll show it to you tonight. This was a kneeling bench made that my husband made in Yoakum's yeah. Oh. Uh, class, the tobacco chewing man. Yeah. Yes, he was. And, and uh, he made that. Now I don't know whether he was in ninth grade when he made it. I don't know what year you took shop, but uh, he did make that, and I gave it to the historical society. We used that when we were married. It's a kneeling bench, and we used it. We were married in the farmhouse where I grew up, and uh, my husband had a three-day leave. So it was just a very simple wedding, but we used this kneeling bench. So I guess we can say we had an adventuresome high school, high school time. My name is Janet. Last name was Cope at that time. I am a now. Um, I graduated in 1951. As I said, I'm one of the young ones here. I was also a country kid. And we had eight grades in Edison. That's where I had to go to school. And we came to high school. It was kind of an awakening when you went to high school because you got everything thrown at you the first year. You had a little bit of algebra, and you had a little bit of Latin, plus your other courses. And it was a little bit mind-boggling, but we managed to get through it. I think we all enjoyed it. I also went out with sports, but I had to walk home. It was a mile from Doylestown, which was okay. But as Dick said, anybody who knew you picked you up and took you home. It was safe then. Um, I enjoyed my life at high school. It was fun. It was a great bunch of people. We get together with quite a few of them right now, um, a couple times a year. It's amazing how things have gone. <coughs> it's certainly been a change. Yes. <laughs> I um, would like to mention too, we have what we call a lunch bunch. 
Uh, it's a group of us that get together from the class of 49 each month for dinner. In December, we go to dinner at the Cock and Bull. Uh, I was just taking <coughs> through some notes. I had made a lot of notes and then left most of them home. We were speaking about football and Mr. Wolf. Well, in 1946, Eugene Brickemile, Meyer, 31, recently discharged from the U.S. Navy with the rank of lieutenant after nearly four years of service in connection with the Navy's physical training program, has been given the position of head football coach at Dawson High School. Salary will be $3,000, and he will teach social studies at Phys Ed, and he was a 1934 graduate of Dawson High School. Mm -hmm. Expenses for the 45-46 year for instruction amounted to $110,225, including $93,771 for the salary of his teachers. Operation of the school plan was $11,113, and maintenance at $6,516. I had notes and there's too about the cost of busing, and it was like three something an hour, and not very much a mile compared to what it is now. I'll probably think of some more things as we go, and I'll look at some of my notes I had in here also. Jody just reminded me that nobody has spoken about the war. Uh, yeah. 1941 was the last class, of course, that, well, the war happened in 1941, so we were the last class out before the war. And, uh, so that was kind of. Do you remember the big scrap heap? Scrap uh, yeah. 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 Huge yeah. scrap heap in the playroom. Mm -hmm. Watching for planes from the courthouse. Oh, yeah. you that? I did that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 45 a year I started as freshman was a really historic year. And I, as I told the um, class members of the reunion, I don't think as 12 and 13 year olds, which we were then, we realized what an important era we were living through. Uh, Germany surrendered, Japan was bombed and surrendered, Germany surrendered that year. Uh, so we were really living through an important era that I don't think we realized the importance. Do you ladies have any memories of Miss Kelly? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Miss Kelly. No one's talking about Miss Kelly. Oh, yes. oh, yes. The gym demonstrations, I don't know. Jody, you. Oh, yes. There was one right in here. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I was the back end of a horse. <laughs> 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 I didn't hear that. Can we have somebody else that would like to make a comment? John? About, about Alan P. George. My husband lived, he graduated in 1954. Can you hear me back here? I'm not going to My husband graduated in 54, and he lived in an apartment house of three apartments, and he was on the second floor. And Alan P. George was on the third floor. And every night when he would come home, he would start at the bottom of the steps. I can't give you anything but love, baby. <laughs> All the way up to the third floor every night. And in between, he'd knock on the door. Jim, are you studying? Can I keep the mic for a second? Sure. I hope you don't mind me intruding a little bit since I'm, I'm not a graduate of Dawestown High School, but I attended kindergarten, first, second, third, and fourth grade in that building before the before we switched to Linden. So I have memories of the lavatories down the stairways, um, the stair steps, which were actually hollowed out because of the use. Um, and there's an artist. My name is John Miller. My father and uncles and aunt um, were in the classes of 30. 538. Two of them were in 41. My aunt was in 45. Doris Miller. Uh, Ed Miller and Frank Miller were your classmates. Bobby. Bobby, yeah. <laughs> Bobby. Bobby did not graduate. He got his, Bobby got his high school equivalency diploma about eight years ago, a couple years before he passed away, in a special ceremony. Um, my oldest uncle, whom I'm named after, John Edwards Miller, 
uh, was class of 35 or 36, so he played football with uh, Bergelmeyer oh, yeah. and Bill Powers and that sort of thing. And uh, he, he was lost in the war. Uh, but mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, I found an artifact in, the, in his belongings, and it was a high school ring from the class of 1936. And uh, it was small in size. Mm -hmm. It's my uh, high school yeah. ring. But the initials inside were not my uncle's initials. <laughs> they were AJH, which happened to be Alta Holmes. Oh, yeah. So um, Mary Howe and I collaborated, and I gave the ring to Mary, and Mary took it to the class reunion of that class and returned the ring to. Alta at that reunion with a little embellishment. Oh, that's that's nice. 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 Um, There's a ring from 1927. 27, wow. Um, there is another artifact that survived the fire, and that's the high school flag um, that was on the pedestal on the, on the uh, auditorium stage. Um, it was donated to the Historical Society uh, several years ago. Um, so I asked about it, and, and perhaps it's still in the archives, but the flag, the school flag, school colors, that sort of thing, um, is, is, um, is with the Dostan Historical Society, and Dad rescued it from the fire when they all scrambled in to rescue everything they could. Uh, what caused the fire? I don't know. The, I don't remember the details. Uh, but they cleaned, they cleaned the school steps, those wooden steps that went two floors, right. with oil and rags, oh. yeah. and it went up like uh, a torch. Torch. <laughs> torch. <laughs> torch. <laughs> That's Who knew that the yearbook would be named Torch? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, thank you. For this is a picture of the fire breaking through, and then I have copies of all the newspaper articles. So that was about 15 minutes after the fire was happening. I was on my way to work at the hospital. Uh, I had to think of something else, too. Back in some of the notes I had made, uh, they had announced that the, and this would have been about 46, too, probably that uh, the school was going to be getting a federal subsidy for the lunches, and lunch was going to be available for 20 cents. But then when the school board members complained about the fact, and I have to admit I was a guilty one, of children going down into town with their lunches and having sweets, et cetera, for the lunch and leaving behind a good lunch, well, I didn't leave my lunch behind, but I remember going down to the palace of sweets at lunch. <laughs> 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 or after school. Yeah. Yeah. There was another place on State Street where a lot of uh, our class went at lunchtime. It was the United Procurement. No. Yeah. On State Street between Pine and uh, Donaldson Street. And Ricky Curtis was the, the gal behind the soda bar. And I think uh, Doc Parnell or something like that was the pharmacist. Well, um, as much as I would like to continue doing this, uh, we are getting now reports that the rooms are just starting to get slippery. So, oh. rather than keep you any longer, I know you're starting to have a problem. Maybe we can have a continuation of this. <laughs>